So <coughs> we talked a little bit about the solution. I think what I will probably do in like when I return the exam in lieu of like going through the, the solution again in like significant detail because we kind of just did now. Um, I'll just give you the graded exam when we, when we do that back. But I mean, you know how it is. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm always trying to uh, be fair with my, my deduction. It takes me a little while to grade the exam because I'm going to go through and if there's common mistakes like that stagger on what problem two, if I take off, I don't know what I'm going to take off for, but if I take off, let's say, I don't know, five points, I just made that number up. But if I take out five points for this person, I got to take five points for this person. So I try and make sure that I'm fair. It's, that takes a while because it's a complicated exam. It's not, you know, just what's the derivative of x squared. There's there's a lot going on there. So that might take. I'm I'm my goal is to get it back to you next week because I'm going to try and do it over the weekend. So, but that might take a little bit. I just want to want to uh, prep for that. Um, as for the status of the homeworks, so uh, homework one uh, and two should be graded and returned, right? Homework three, the solution's posted, and you don't have a homework at all, actually, in either of my classes, right? Because concrete design, you just turned in a homework, and steel design, I'm not assigning anything until Monday. So y'all are, are good, right? They're like, does that make up for the exam? They're like, no, but, but it's a nice start. So why did I call that beam and slab design? That's not, that's not right. That's bolted connection. I'm going to change that. So we're going to have, so just so you're aware, we're going to have two homework assignments on the second exam. There's going to be one homework assignment on bolted connections and one homework assignment on welded connections. And I, I mean, I know that, that, that given the first exam, you're probably like, yeah, right. But, but I, I am serious. Bolted connections and welded connections are among the easiest topics. Not only do we cover in this class, but I think they're probably some of the easiest topics that I teach, period, because they're, they're really straightforward from a conceptual standpoint, especially welds. Like, there's some, you know, material and behavioral aspects you need to understand, but the math is really, really simple, okay? Um, so I just want to get right into uh, bolted connections. Um, it's been a while since we've talked about a lot of this, so I'm going to... I'm going to go back a little bit. I'm going to go through these slides rather quickly, um, but I want to just make sure that we kind of remember what we're talking about because you know it's been a while since we discussed this. So we're in so we're in bolted uh, connection land, and uh, remember there are two types of bolted connections that we're really focusing on, uh, and that's uh, bearing type connections and slip critical connections. We haven't yet discussed slip critical connections. We'll do that later. Um, but a uh, bearing type connection relies on the bolt actually bearing on the plate to resist the load, and a slip critical connection actually relies on the friction developed between your plate. So slip critical connections, you end up requiring more bolts, and that will become evident later on. But for now, we're going to keep it simple and talk about bearing type connections. Whenever you're looking at bearing type connections, there's two different ways that a bearing type connection can fail. We either fail the bolt or we fail the plate. So when we're talking about failing the bolt, we're talking about shearing the bolt in half. Okay? Now the shear capacity of the bolt is, is pretty straightforward to compute, but we really don't have to compute it at all. Um, and the reason why is because of table 7.1. Um, so <clears throat> for table 7.1, uh, it, it, it accounts for all of the uh, scenarios that we need to consider. Namely, are threads uh, included or excluded in the shear plane? Uh, and whether or not we are dealing with a single shear plane or a double shear plane. Uh, and so this table takes that into account. If you have yet to tab that, do so. Um, it's, it's an incredibly important guide, and it's an incredibly simple guide. It does all the math for us. What we do have to compute, however, is the failure of the plate. That one we do have to assess. Okay? And so we have bolt tear out and we have bolt ovalization, bolt hole ovalization. Those are the two uh, phenomenons that happen when you're looking at bearing type failures. And so ovalization is kind of similar to yielding because you get this plastification uh, of the plate, so you go past the, the yielding uh, phenomenon. Uh, for tear out, what's happening is you're actually, it's, it's kind of like a mini block shear failure where you're literally fracturing the plate in shear uh, along the edges of the bolt hole. So we have our expression for capacity. Um, 
uh, what we did uh, last time is last time we discussed this is we said well we can take this and simplify it a bit so uh, split it up into our minimum uh, perspective like we had before the upper part relates to the tear out the lower part relates to the bolt hole mobilization uh, and you can tell because if you look at the tear out expression it's basically a mini block shear check um, the one parameter that's kind of new here I think everything else is pretty plug and chug the one that's kind of new is LC. LC is basically clear distance between plate edges. So you could have between the edge of the hole and the edge of the plate, or between two edges of adjacent holes, okay? Along the direction of loading. Keep in mind, we're talking about, about how it's gonna fail. So if we're talking about this plate, we're yanking it up, uh, we're yanking it up, if you will, like you see in the slide, the plate is going to want to either tear this way or it's going to want to ovalize and stretch out this way because think, you know, we're yanking it, the bolts are here, you know, you might yank the plate up, the bolt is going to bear here and bear there. Does, does that make sense? Okay. So here's our notation. S is the bolt spacing, same term we used before. This is a new term here, LE, the edge distance. LCI is this clear space between this edge and this edge. LCE, this edge and that edge. Uh, and so the math is pretty simple. S minus DH for LCI and LCE, LE minus DH over 2. Uh, we talked about that last time. Uh, so again, pretty straightforward. La last thing I did uh, with this expression is I actually factored out all the common stuff, factored out the thickness, factored out the T, and I actually factored out the 1.2, so that became LC and that became 2, because if you divide that by 1.2, it comes up 2. <coughs> Excuse me. Sound good? Now, don't, I'll use my place to don't forget that, okay? We're dealing with the actual physical dimensions of the hole. So I know y'all might get a little ticked off at me. We're going to be using the hole, um, or the actual dimension of the hole. So when we look at hole diameters for bolted connections, we add a sixteenth of an inch, not an eighth of an inch, okay? So that's something to remember for homework four and for the examples that we're doing now. All right, that's capacity. Let's talk about layout. Layout, um, we have two really, um, two critical components that we're trying to manage when we lay out a bolted connection. And when I say layout, I mean how far apart do we space the bolts from each other? How close can we put them to the edge? Or how far apart do they need to be from the edge um, or from each other? If the bolts get too close together, we can't get a wrench around them to tighten them. Okay, so we have to actually have them far enough apart so we can actually facilitate construction. So that's the reason for minimum spacings. But on the flip side, if bolts get too far apart, um, we can get water between them. Oh my goodness, I am a popular guy right now. Um, if they get too far apart, we get water in them. Uh, water in between our plates. Right? Remember, you're, you're, you have a plate, a plate, you're bolting it together. If those bolts get too far apart, you can get a gap between those plates. Gap between those plates means you can seep in water. Water and metal don't get along. They tend to uh, generate corrosion together. And so that's a big, uh, big no-no. Um, without, in lieu of going through all of this stuff, because we went through this last time, I want to get to here. So here's a summary of all the formulas that are relevant. So we have our bolt shear capacity. We have our bolt bearing capacity expression, LCI. And LCE and, and DH and so on and so forth. Don't forget uh, DH is DB plus a sixteenth of an inch. Uh, and then our bolt spacing requirements. We have our minimum bolt spacing and our preferred bolt spacing. Um, in design mode, um, unless I tell you otherwise, um, here, here's sort of my perspective on it. Um, I actually use the minimum on this because, um, and here's why. Uh, if I'm using three quarter inch bolts, Three quarter inches times two and two thirds actually equals two inches. Okay, it comes up pretty even. So if I'm using three quarter inch bolts, I might try and space them two inches on center instead of two and a quarter inches on center. Because that would be the preferred spacing. Um, but just so you are aware, in practice, a very common grid spacing of bolts is three inches because three inches meets the minimum and maximum spacing requirements for three quarter inch bolts. 1 inch diameter bolts, 7 eighths inch diameter bolts, the three most common bolt diameters, which is why 3 inch bolt spacing is so common. Um, there's your minimum and maximum. Our maximum bolt spacing that I have here, I am assuming that the members are unpainted. 
Remember, there's actually two limits for maximum spacing requirements. One's if the member is painted and one if the member is unpainted. If the member's painted, we're actually allowed a little bit more leeway, but I want to be conservative in our estimate. And keep in mind, we're talking about some really big uh, uh, bolt spacing beds. Um, everybody good? Okay. Now, I must confess, I don't have my manual. Oh man. Yeah. Well, you got me coming. Um, I might actually pause the recording a little bit and go and grab my manual. But then again, I'm looking at a couple folks around here that don't have theirs. If you have, if you have it in your car, go ahead and grab it. I'll be right back. So I, I'll go. I'll even put it on the recording. We'll add one full point to the mistake counter on that one. It's like three. No, nah, it's yeah. It's a free whole book. Now, that's a nice try, but that's not going to happen. <laughs> it doesn't help that my office is clear on the other end of the building. Okay, so we're going to compute the capacity of this bearing type connection. I have one inch diameter group AX bolts. Help me out. What's the deal with the shear situation on those bolts? Double shear, right? So we have a double shear situation. Um, we're also going to determine the bearing capacity of this connection, and this is going to lead into a discussion about that later, or about that today. But we'll, um, we'll just we'll, we'll get into that. All right. Every time. So notice we have a three inch grid spacing. Again, like I said, very, very common. What number example is this? Eight, eight. I, I forget sometimes. <laughs> so we have group. A X bolts. Um, another thing the problem said was um, the plate is A36. Which, by the way, I don't know that I've ever actually drawn this symbol, but have you all seen that symbol before for center line? So sometimes I might do that for plate. So you're wondering what the heck that is. So, so if I say, that's what I'm talking about. My shorthand. So, in fact, sometimes it's very common to say three-quarter inch <laughs> diameter bolt, but I don't like doing that because sometimes you confuse that with feet. So I don't, I don't usually do that very often. Okay. <coughs> At least I used to. Now, now I don't. Okay. Now, we have two limit states to assess, so we're going to start off with bolt shear. Okay. Now, let's see. Uh, let's let's do bolt shear over here. So bolt shear. So what do we know? Group A bolts. Threads excluded. We know the diameter of the bolt is one inch, and as uh, Mr. Ring said, this is a double shear situation, which is exactly correct. So, how much can each bolt withstand in shear? <coughs> So everybody know where we're going to, right? Table 
can now look up with you now that I have my manual with me. <coughs> I think that's only like the second time I've forgotten my manual in the past like five years. And I know y'all will never let me live it down. Glad to be here for this. <laughs> All right, anybody got a number for me? 80.1. 80.1. Do I have a second on that? All right, there we go. And I believe that's what I had to get to my example here. Exactly right. So that's 80.1. Now watch how I'm going to write this. I'm going to say kips per bolt. Now I also sometimes when I when I write this like so we say phi r n and phi little <coughs> r n. Um, usually what I do when I when I calculate this out is I, to make sure that I'm not missing stuff up or, or, or that I'm organizing everything appropriately. I'll say the little r's is on a per bolt basis, but the big r's is for the entire connection. So I, it's just sort of my way of keeping track. So therefore, help me out, what would phi r n be for the entire connection? 80.1 times 3, or 6. It's 6. Yeah, great. Yeah, and that's exactly right. Yeah, because there's the connection has 6 bolts. So 80.1. 80.1 kips per bolt times 6 bolts. So, VRN is 480.6 kips. So far, so good? So, maybe what I'll do up here is I'll say limit state. So, limit state number one, bolt, shear. Four hundred eighty point six kips. In other words, it will take 480.6 kips to shear those bolts in half, right? That's, that's our first limit state, okay? Now, our second limit state is bolt bearing. But there's a caveat to that, and that's going to become clear here in a second, okay? All right. What I've got, and, and we can ignore this problem to sort of explain this, but what I've got, whenever you have a bolted connection, or a welded connection for that matter, but since we're talking about bolted connections, let's restrict it there. Whenever you have a bolted connection, you have plate one, plate two, connected, right? Yank it on. So the first thing that can happen is you can shear the bolts in that, right? The second thing that can happen is that you fail the plate, but the question is, which plate are you talking about? Are you talking about this one, or are you talking about this one, right? So whenever you're talking about a bolted connection, like a connection where you have member A and member B connected and you're yanking them, there's always two cases of bolt bearing. There's going to be a case one and a case two. Now, how are we going to handle this? Well, let's look at the member. I have a three-quarter inch plate transferring load in one direction, right? And then in the other direction, I don't have one. I have two plates transferring load in the other direction, right? So the way that I'm going to write this is I'm going to say bolt bearing case one, we're just going to look at the main plate, okay? Whereas for case two, we'll call those the splice plates. And that is always the case whenever you have a bolt bearing or a bolted connection 
where you're applying members' intention. There's always going to be two cases. The one transferring load that way, and the one's transferring load that way. Okay? And, and to be clear, um, it, 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 you know, there's a number of different situations where this could happen. Right? You could have this. You could just have a single, what we call a lap connection. Right? This would be case one and that would be case two. You could have what we're dealing with here. <coughs> right? That's what we're dealing with here, right? And you could get even fancier. You could have a scenario where You know what I mean? But in the end, there's always two cases. All the plates transfer and load that way, and all the plates transfer and load that way. Does that make sense? Okay. So, for the sake of the discussion here, what I'm going to do is look at the volt bearing capacity, and I'm going to start off with case one, which is the main plate. So, volt bearing. Case one, main plate. All right, so let's look at main plate. Now, let's, let's identify some important parameters. What is the thickness of that main plate? What's that? Three quarters. What about the bolt spacing? How far apart are the bolts spaced from each other? Three inches. Is that clear? Right? Now, let's look at the edge distance. Now, this is how far apart the bolts are from the edge of the plate. Now, it's all about which dimension do you use. Is that the dimension you use? What dimension do you use? Two and a half. Okay. Let's look at your main plate. Okay. Let's look at it over here. Okay. Because I want this to make sense. Now I'm going to look at the just the main plate. Okay. So the main plate is this one right here. So it looks like this. Right. And I got one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm yanking on it that way, right? So what I care about is that distance. That's my edge distance, right? These are my bolt spacings. That's my bolt spacing. That's the edge distance. Okay, so if I'm looking at the main plate, which is this one, I'm yanking it this way, I care about that distance. And the edge distance for the main plate is two and a half. For case two, what would my edge distance be? Two inches, right? So different cases can have different edge distances, different thicknesses, and so on and so forth. Once you figure out these parameters, it really is very plug and shut. This is easily the hardest part. That is easily the hardest part. Everything else is going to be very, very, very plug and shut. Everybody good? Watch this. Now, the bolt diameter is three quarters of an inch. So what's the hole diameter? Plus what? A sixteen. So three quarters is twelve sixteenths. Twelve sixteenths plus one is thirteen sixteenths. I get that right? I'm going to leave that in a fraction. 
because you multiply that out, the fraction gets a little nasty. Or the, the, the decimal, it's like four decimal places. So we'll just leave it like that. Okay, so this is pretty simple. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to compute LCE, LCI, and two times the bolt diameter. Okay? Wait, no, whoa, 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 whoa. What's the bolt diameter? One inch. One inch. Oh, we're going to let me just go on with that. So that, that one mistake, that, that one point on the mistake counter just dropped to 0.97. That's seven tenths. Seven sixteenths. Yeah, because that's a one inch diameter bolt. Okay. Now, my formulas for uh, edge distance uh, uh, and interior clear distances are LE minus half a hole diameter and S minus an entire hole diameter. Y'all remember that? So, this is two and a half inches minus one half of 17 sixteenths and this is three inches minus 17 sixteenths. So let's do that to like three decimal places. LCE, and we got one for LCE. Say two decimal places. Say three. three. Okay. One point nine six nine. Second. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next. <coughs> 1.938. That's just two inches. All right, everybody good? Okay, so the reason why we computed that is because we have to compute bolt bearing. Okay, so our bolt bearing capacity expression is the following it's 1.2 times T times FU times the minimum of LC or 2 times the bolt diameter. Okay. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, wait a minute, which one do I use? Do I use the LCE or do I use the LCI? That's not the, 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 the consideration because you're, you're going to look at both. See, what we're going to do is we're going to compute a bearing capacity for an edge plate and a bearing capacity for an or a if bearing plate. We're going to compute a bearing capacity for an, an edge bolt and then a bearing capacity for an interior bolt. So we're going to have a little RNE and a little RNI. So that's going to be 1.2 times the thickness times FU times the minimum of LCE and 2 times the bolt diameter. So, let's look at this, okay? What's the minimum of LCE in 2dB? LCE, right? So, all I'll do is I'll just say 1.2 times T times FU times that. So, 1.2 times 3 quarters times FU. We had, I don't think we actually determined that. That was A36, so what's FU? 58 KSI times 1.969. Actually, here, let me put that up here. Um, FU is 58 KSI. 
We actually don't need the yield stress for this part. We actually won't need it at all. All right, so what does this come out to be? 102.78. Do I have a second on that? Okay. So now we'll do an RNI. 1.2 TFU times the minimum LCI over 2 dB, which is 1.2 times 3 quarters, 58. And then the minimum of those two, which is also the LC, so 1.938. interior bolt bearing capacity, but that's just one of each. That's why I'm using the little r, because that's the capacity of a bolt in bearing, capacity of a, a bolt, interior bolt in bearing, so on and so forth. What we got to do is we got to figure out how many bolts to use, okay? So I want to show you something. Um, let's say I have a plate, and let's, let's put a lot of bolts here. Let's say I've got a plate. And I'm yanking on it like this. And let's say it's got let's just do that. How many bolts are in that connection? What? Twenty? Okay. Now, when I'm yanking on it, if if Imagine, so imagine you had a, a, you know, this, this plate bolted down and you're yanking on it and you failed the plate in bearing. So all, so these bolts just ripped through the plate, right? So which are the edge bolts? The ones up here or the ones down here? The ones on the bottom, right? These are the edge bolts. These are the interior bolts. So how many edge bolts are in this connection? Five. And how many interior bolts? 15, right? Five edge bolts, 15 interior bolts. So, so we'll say edge is five, interior equals 15. So my question is, if I want to compute the capacity for the problem at hand, how many edge bolts, how many interior bolts? Hold on, hold on. Think about it. Two edge bolts, four interior bolts. Yeah, got to got to look at the whole thing. Yeah, got to look at yeah the whole thing. So this total capacity is going to be two R N E plus four R N I. We'll say one decimal place, keep it simple. They got an answer? Probably 600 something. 610.2 kips. Say it. Is that my design capacity? You're shaking your head no. Why? 
BRN, exactly right. And what is speed for a bearing type connection? Anybody remember? What's that? That's a good question. It is a good question. That's why I asked it. 0.75. 0.75. Generally, this is not always the case in steel design, but generally, if it involves yielding, it's 0.9, but if it involves fracture, because I think we're talking about you know tearing out and things like that, uh, it's 0.75. That's not always the case, but it's not a bad guess. So VRN is what? Seven point seven kips. Do I have a second on that? Yep. So, so if we look at our limit states, bolt bearing case one four fifty seven point seven kips. Right. So if I yank on this connection, the main plate is going to fail in bearing before we shear the bolts in half. Okay. So this tells me how my connection is going to fail and understanding that is important for design purposes. Okay? Does that make sense? All right, now a couple other points before we close the lecture for today. Um, there is still an entirely separate case of, of bolt bearing and that's looking at case two. Okay? Now I want to follow through what we did here. How did we do this? Well, we needed these three values, and basically these three values affected everything we did here, right? So if I change those values up, all I'd have to do is just repeat all this, right? So let's look at case two, okay? Um, bolt bearing case. So what we need in order to do this is a thickness, a bolt spacing, and an edge distance. Okay? Now, I'm going to be lazy and copy this over. Now, let's take the care of the easy one. What's the bolt spacing going to be for the splice plates? Three, it's no different. It's three inches. Alright. Now, let's take care of the next most challenging one. What is the edge distance for the splice plates? It's not two and a half, it's two inches. Okay? The final question, what is the thickness? Now remember, we always have two cases of bolt bearing. We have all the plates transferring load this way, and all the plates transferring load this way. So what thickness do you think you would use? One inch. One inch, exactly right. You're lumping all the plates together. So it would be two times a half of an inch. So it's the everything we just did, literally just do it again with those values. Now I'm not going to make you do that. You ought to just to make sure that you're comfortable with it. When you do, you end up getting a VRN of 558. Okay? Could you use a half inch and just multiply by the number of bytes at the end? You could do that. That's fine. Or you could just use a single thickness. It, it doesn't matter. What we're talking about at this point is just bookkeeping. So at, at that point, you could do it however you want. You could look at a single plate multiplied by the number of plates, or just use a composite thickness. We get the same answer. Now, this has a much higher capacity. Does that make sense? Well, it makes sense if you look at the plate thickness. I had a three-quarter inch plate thickness one way and a one-inch plate thickness the other way. It's going to take more to fail the one-inch plate than it is the three-quarter, right? Make sense? Now, so let me ask you this. Looking at this connection, how is it going to fail? 
It's going to the, first, the main plate is going to fail in bolt bearing, Those, uh, and specifically they're going to tear out. So if you want to say for the connection, VRN is, what is it, 457.7 kips. But if you want to get Super, super technical. As a structural designer, you are not done with this problem. Why are you not done with this problem? Here's why you're not done with this problem. You need to check the gross section yielding capacity, the 0.9 FYAG of each of the two plates, of each of the two cases. Section, or what about four? What about next section fracture? And finally, You've got the block shear rupture capacity of each plate as well. I'm not making you do that, and I'm not going to make you do that on homework assignments. We've already been through tension members. It's time to move on. But I want you to recognize that there's oodles of different limit stakes for this connection that would that would be relevant. Because it's very what if what if the gross section yielding capacity is like 250 kips? You know, well that means it's going to this, we're going to fail this before any of this happens, right? Now that might be fine, right? If if your load's only 240. But, you know, you're never going to know that until you go through and check it all. Sound good? Right. What we're going to do next time is we're going to design. And I swear it, there, there isn't anything to it. One bolt holds 80 kits. You need the connection to hold up 500 kits. 500 divided by 80, that's how many bolts you use. Space them out according to your spacing requirements. Which is one final thing we are going to look at with this connection. We did not have time to do that. We'll do that tomorrow. And that's the spacing requirements, the minimum edge distance and all that. We're going to do that next time. We just didn't have time to do it today. Um, <coughs> that's all I got, everybody. See you all next time. Or actually, no, we'll see you on Monday. No homework in Dr. Mike's class over the weekend for either one. So.